But one of the fun questions that I love to ask every guest that we have on the show, because everyone's genetics are different. And that's a big thing that I think so many people don't realize that your genetics have play a huge role in what you're going to end up being able to achieve. But everyone always has that one body part when they get started working out that really, really takes off where they don't have to train it as much. And then everyone always has that one body part that just lags behind that they have to just train to overdrive. I'll give you my examples first. But for me, my back being that in, you know, in college, I work jobs where, you know, you're lifting heavy packages, you know, up to like 150 pounds, you know, for eight hours a day into trucks while I was going to college, you know, you're, you're going to get a, you're going to get a really, really strong developed back or you're going to quit. Those are basically the two scenarios that really presented themselves. But for me, my legs, I'm six foot three. So my lower body is just absolutely shot where, I mean, I have to train it into overdrive to get it to look like any semblance, like I work out. And then, you know, the number one calves, because that's the number one genetic thing where, I mean, you're, well, either, you're tall. Yeah. Well, that too. When you're tall and I'm tall, I'm five, eight for a female, I'm tall. It's so hard because the muscles are so long, you know, and it's just, but like you said, the genetics, that's a huge factor of whatever your nationality is and that kind of thing. So your back is really strong and really big. So a lot of times too, um, for me, my lower body is, it used to be, now this is funny, I'm 49 years old. It used to be the hardest part for me to get was like my glutes and my hamstrings to tie in. Now that comes like this. Now my shoulders are the thing that want to disappear when I start dieting. So in figure, you have to have big shoulders, you know, they want you to have round shoulders. And for me, it's like, I get them when I'm training them off season. But as soon as I start my diet and my cardio, they just are the first thing that go away because they're my smallest muscle that I've you know actually worked on and built. My back is good. My glutes. Okay. Everything else is great. And my shoulders are like, wah, wah. <laughs> like and it's like, come back, come back. <laughs> so that's kind of why I've been adding the bison back in my diet too. Cause I feel like the food if I'm dieting too strict and I'm another person that's a freak because I do wonderful with carbohydrates. If I cut my carbs out, I shrink down to nothing so fast. If I add carbs in, even before bedtime, I, I get so lean. And people are like, how low do you go with your carbs? I'm like, I actually have to increase my carbs. <laughs> so... <laughs> 49 years old and she has arms like that. I'm like, this is absolutely ridiculous. Come on, people. But see, that's yeah. hope for you. But yeah. when you're 49, you have arms like that. Yeah. See, you know, yeah, there's there's hope for everyone out there. But how long into your journey before you decided, hey, I should I could do a bodybuilding show. This sounds like something I'd be interested in. Okay, I started competing in figure the first time they had it, 2001, and I stuck with it all the way. I was doing national level. Like every time I would do an amateur show, I would qualify for national. So that was like my objective with the amateur shows. I only won one amateur show, which was the biggest one, the Emerald Cup. I won that in 2004. The, I, I won my class, not the whole show. Um, and then I qualified for the nationals. and I just kept on the national circuit until 2007. And see, back then, figure was saturated with girls. You would show up at a show, there was 50 to 60 competitors per class. Now there's like 10, if you're lucky. Like it's crazy because they all went to bikini. So I didn't know that. So I left competing in figure and then I started competing in kettlebell lifting as a sport, the Russian sport. I did that for kettlebells and Pilates. I did only without weight training for approximately 10 years. And then last year at the Olympia 2018, I see Jeannie all the time because I, I buy some food from her. And I was just like, she told me, yeah, I'm getting some girls ready for the Vegas classic for figure. And I said, ah, oh, I was like, cause I was already kind of lean. I said, I should do that again. I haven't done that in so long. She goes, oh yeah, girl, you should do the masters. You'll kill it. And I thought masters, I'm going to do the open too. Like, I don't care. So I, cause like, that's my head. I don't think about my age ever. So I just go, I could do both. Like, you know, so I did both. I did the masters and the open and I won both. And, um, then that qualified me for the show I'm doing on July 27th, which is five and a half weeks away. It's the NPC USA's. That was the last show I did in 2007, and now it's the first one I'm going to do. And hopefully, the top two spots get their pro card, so it's a pro qualifier. So, training hard for that. That really needs to whip everyone else into shape. If the person who won the Masters wins the overall as well, that must mean to get those younger people like, are you kidding? Come on, get get your Well, you know what? You know what about that, though? When you're in the Masters category, it's a lot harder than people think mm -hmm. because those women have been training for a long time. And they have muscle maturity, which is one of the things that young people don't have. So it's not like this is the only sport where younger is not better. It's middle age is better because if you've been training, if you just started, say you're 18 years old, because one of the girls that competes in my class, she was 18 and she got second to me and she looks amazing. But the only thing going against her is she's so young that she doesn't have the muscle maturity. So she's gaining that obviously. And 10 more years from now, she'll, you know, probably dominate everybody. So if she sticks with it. 
So that's the thing, though. So if you're 18, 19 years old, and even the top figure pro in the world right now, she started competing at 18. She's 26, and she's now Miss Olympia for her second time. So it takes about 10 years, you know, eight to 10 years of seriously training and not saying you can't look good before then. Of course you look good, but to get that development and that, you know, the harder, denser muscle comes with age, you know, it's like why. 